You did? Unless you're looking to be scrapped for parts, I suggest you head to the admin building and check in with the Master Sergeant. What's up guys, it's Widgeon TV here. Just a couple hundred meters north of the Wade Airport lies the Camp McChimtock Proving Grounds. I was actually doing a video on the Brotherhood, but after searching the Insane Asylum, or Fort Defiance, the quest I was following sent me here to become a soldier. So let's join the army. Next to the entrance of the main building on campus, we find an overseer cache. Overseer's log. Camp McCullough talk. Whew. Maybe I'm going crazy. But it was nice to put on the uniform and play pretend with a bunch of robot drill sergeants. I actually think I learned a thing or two about marksmanship. I wonder, now that I'm in the army, is my official title Overseer Private or Private Overseer? <laughs> oh, time to see if I can fool a few automated identification systems. It sounds like the Overseer just finished a marathon. Her labored breathing suggests that we're in for a workout. Here's the Master Sergeant. Hmm. Well, what do we have here? What in the holy name of... You are out of uniform, cadet! And with no uniform voucher, you will return in army fatigues and helmet, or you will not return at all! Before we go off to get a change of clothes, we can find a note next to this terminal. We support Quinn Carter by the Charleston Herald Editorial Board. We, the members of the Charleston Editorial Board, wish to publicly express our support for the Herald Reporter and her continued employment at this periodical. The public cries for Mrs. Carter's resignation following her interview with the now former Senator Samuel Blackwell stands in stark contrast to our nation's value of freedom of the press and our duty to report crucial news to the public at large. Mrs. Carter's interview is fully protected under the laws of our great territory. This note is surprisingly relevant today. The people of Appalachia are calling for Quinn Carter's resignation just because she interviewed a controversial subject. The reason Sam Blackwell was so controversial was because he co-founded the Free States organization before the Great War. I have a full video on the Free States, so if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link in the description for you. Next to the note, we find a rather hilarious terminal. Monthly training reports. Training report, May 2077, Sergeant O'Malley. The illustrious asshats that that we call leadership in this fine organization, have proclaimed from on high that my role as senior drill instructor is no longer necessary. I have been informed that these worthless maggots will instead be molded into productive members of society by these tin can shitboxes they're calling Mr. Gutsy. Unbelievable. I assumed, as any sane man would, that these things were here to clean my shoes and kill vermin inside the campgrounds. Instead, my orders are to train these worthless fucking glorified vacuum cleaners how to do my job. As instructed, I will provide a monthly report of these futile efforts to my superiors. They will be short and with minimal amount of detail to secure my goddamn pension. Training Report, June 2077. I have to admit, I didn't think I was going to be surprised by the results of the first training session with this robot they have the balls to call a drill sergeant, but I was. I was absolutely fucking shocked at how much more completely fucking incompetent these toasters were than I imagined in my wildest fucking dreams. Let me provide a brief executive summary of this month's events. First off, I'm pretty sure they cannot traverse upstairs or any kind of steep incline. One of them reverted to some old code and started landscaping the ground. What's worse is that they were fucking terrible at it. These things refuse to ever shut the hell up. If one of them calls me a commie-loving bastard one more time, I will forcefully dismantle it with my service rifle. During a basic live fire exercise, one of them accidentally killed Private Adams with about 17 stray rounds. So I guess you'd better train these shit heaps to fill out paperwork too. Is that enough? It certainly is for me. Training Report, July 2077. Training a piece of shit machine to effectively communicate with the worthless group of scumbags we're calling recruits is a royal waste of time. Whoever thought they could match the eloquent and efficiency of a trained USAF officer was sorely mistaken. All they're capable of is shouting canned phrases in a ridiculous voice and threatening recruits if they don't comply. Private Taylor neglected to make his rack yesterday, and one of those damn things nearly burned the barracks down. Is it truly necessarily for them to be equipped with goddamn flamethrowers? 
This poor guy, I can't imagine. Training report, August 2077. Against my strongest recommendation, I have been informed that the transition to a fully automated Camp McChimtock is now complete after only four months of training. In layman's terms, this means we're all completely fucked. Our best and brightest will now be led into hell's fiery asshole by these metal death balls. The only saving grace in this colossal fuck up is I won't be here when the shit hits the fan. I'm getting my wife and kid the hell out of here. Maybe apply for one of those vaults I've heard about. Something tells me we'll be needing them. You're right, Mr. O'Malley. According to the date on the final post in this terminal, you'll be needing one of those bunkers in about 30 days. This terminal also shows how far gone the government was. When you're automating the recruitment and training of the military, it's already really too late for the country. Maybe it was good that the nukes fell and restarted everything. But anyway, moving on, we now return to the Master Sergeant with the proper attire. Now that's what I like to see. All dolled up and ready to die for your country. There are three training exercises you'll need to complete. Marksmanship, agility, and patriotism. Our courses, like all things in the great territory of Appalachia, are automated. So you overpromoted mammals can do them as you see fit. Complete the courses to my satisfaction, and we'll get you moved on to the real test. Dismissed! We are given three options, marksmanship training, agility training, and patriotism training. Hmm, let's start with the easy one first. Starting with the agility test. When given the signal, move through each obstacle triggering all the buttons present. Overcome all the obstacles in order to complete the course. Get on your dancing shoes, Stinson. You're stepping onto my agility course. This test ended up being fairly easy, as long as you give the game enough time to think when pressing the buttons, you should easily pass this test. The second test is the marksmanship training. Again, this one's pretty straightforward, shoot all the targets before the 30 seconds runs out. Now, for this patriotism test. Jimmy Topher and Juan Jin have been accused of supporting collective action, a gateway drug to communism. Talk to the suspected traitors, search their rooms, and collect evidence to uncover the budding communist. Let's start with the room on the far left. My ancestors came over on the Mayflower. All right, nothing weird about that. I work at my neighborhood soda counter. I'd love a raise. Working and wanting a raise is a very capitalist idea, so Topher is probably off the hook. Moving to the middle room. My favorite holiday? Well, that'd have to be the 4th of July. Loving Independence Day is a good sign, but not the proof that we need. Yeah, my pop's in the union. Why do you ask? My terminal keeps me company while pop is at the mine. I needed a new password, so I use the initials of someone I admire a lot. Uh-oh, unions are aligned strongly with communist ideals, especially in the United States in the 1930s and 40s. And I wonder who he looks up to. Well, before we jump the gun, let's check on the last room. This area is way different from San Francisco. The winters are so cold. This country gave my family a fresh start. Someday, I'm gonna own my own car, or two. Well, buying more than you need is a very capitalist idea, so this guy is also probably off the hook. Let's go check back in with Jimmy. Investigating further, we try his terminal, but like he said, it's locked. Right next to it, we find a note. Jimmy's Diary, May 2nd. Dear Diary, today at school we learned about Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR to his chums, as he'd probably say. He did so much to help the people of the country when they were having hard times. He used the government to try to improve people's everyday lives. Well, FDR did create social programs like Social Security that could make him look like a socialist or communist. Let's check out the terminal to find out more. Class today. In class today, Mr. Brown did a chemistry experiment where he lit a weird silvery rock on fire. It burned right through Jinjuan's desk. Boy, that was nifty. Later, we took a quiz, and I didn't do so good because my tummy was rumbling so much. I wish we could have breakfast like other families, but Pop says there isn't the money. After class, Mr. Brown asked me to stay and asked me if I had eaten anything that day. I told him the truth. He gave me a piece of his sandwich. He said folks like us, the working class, need to look out for one another. He said I should come back after class tomorrow, and we can have a talk about it some more. Saw something in the woods was in the woods looking for something to eat until Pop got home with dinner. When I saw the big creature, it was all pale and muscular and it didn't have a head. I named it Morton, but it didn't come when I called it. It just started running off. I followed after it, but couldn't keep up. I wonder where Morton's finding so much food to get so big. 
Pop was coughing again. Pop's been coughing like crazy the past couple of days, but the mine boss says he's got to work. I'm really worried about him. Mitchell said his pop has been suffering from the same thing. No more. Today I'm going to call up my friends and we're going to get all of our pops to take the day off together and maybe the day after that. And maybe the day after that too. We'll show those mine bosses that they can't boss us around. Their workers aren't just pawns in their capitalist scheme. We're going to organize a strike. Yep, this is our guy. Let's go back to the computer to accuse him. Excellent work, cadet. You've uncovered the communal thinker. Continue to hone your skills on friends and family. Every commie uncovered makes America safer. After that's finished, we head over to our last test, the live fire exercise. Like the other tests, this one was fairly easy. So easy, in fact, that I pulled out my favorite weapon in the game so far, the death tambourine. But unfortunately, the last wave spawned a tougher Mr. Gutsy, and the tambourine was a bad idea. But anyway, after the last wave, we hear from the Master Sergeant. Well, watch my chassis. That was a damn fine display, ladies and gents. Damn fine. Now, if that was anyone's last training exercise, you're to check in with me any step so we can get your graduation paperwork sorted. All out. Now we can head back inside to talk to him. Well, well. My sensors tell me you're not nearly as dead as I expected. Impressive, cadet. Or should I say, private. You are now an official member of the United States Army. Get out there and do us proud, soldier. You are dismissed. So that's it. Here we are officially part of the United States Army. And the time it took from me walking onto the proving grounds to becoming a soldier was only about 30 minutes. This automation thing isn't that bad after all. Alright, like I said at the beginning of the video, this was part of a larger video for the Brotherhood I'm working on. So if you want to see that video, or any other future videos I put out, consider subscribing, it goes a long way in supporting my channel. Also consider following me on Twitter, it's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Wijin TV. thanks for watching guys!